If you're going to use the keyboard for a lot of your typing, then you do need to know, understand about the keyboard settings and how they affect your typing. So let's have a look at that. In settings, general, keyboard, at the top there, there are five settings. And then there's a couple of others towards the bottom of the page, which we'll also look at. Auto capitalization means that the first letter of every sentence will be automatically capitalized, which can be a problem if that's not what you want. Auto correction, as you type and you make typing mistakes, it will offer you corrections. And if you don't do anything and just keep typing, it will replace the words that are typed incorrectly with the suggestions and they're not often always correct. So unless you're watching carefully, you can end up with some uh, strange things. Checking the spelling will indicate if there's a mistyped word. So similar to a word processor, underneath a word that has an error will be a red dotted line. And uh, tap that word and it will offer you some suggestions as to what the correct word might be. Enable caps lock. If you wanted to type all in capitals without constantly holding down the shift key, turning uh, caps lock on in the settings will allow you to do that. And the shortcut full stop. At the end of a sentence, if you double tap the space bar, it inserts a full stop followed by a space automatically. Uh, let's have a look at how these work in practice. So in notes, now I've got a, a sentence in there which I'll look at in a minute. But if I'm going to type something, as soon as I go to type, the shift keys, the up arrow keys are already blue, indicating the the blue indicating that this is going to be a capital letter. So the first thing I type will be a capital and then the blue disappears. Uh, if I make a mistake, it's going to immediately offer me and it should offer me a correction of that word. It hasn't. Let's keep going. There's one there. If I keep uh, typing, it will just replace that word to T O D A I with what is the correct version, which for once is okay. But it's not give, picked up uh, the dog with double G or the hoot. It's not very good at picking up mistakes in context in the syntax of the sentence, um, which is why I don't like the auto correction that you're best off looking at yourself after you've typed it, go back and see all the typos you've made and then you can fix them up. Um, at the end of that sentence, if I just double tap the space bar, if you go back, it puts in a full stop followed by a space and then I uh, hit return to do a new line. Already the uh, auto caps is uh, wanting to put in a capital, le uh, capital letter, which is okay at the moment. Has it picked up that mistake? It's picked up that one. Now if I don't want it to replace the word I've typed with the correct word at the bottom, if I tap that word on the cross, it will re uh, delete that word. Uh, it's making too many mistakes to be efficient for me. Uh, I turn autocorrect off for that reason. And then when I'm typing, and that top line at the, at the top there is just a typical example of my typing. And everything that's wrong, incorrectly typed, or there's a space missing, has been indicated with the red dotted line underneath. And this is the, the, the um, setting check spelling. Turn that on. So if I type, I tap that, it's going to give me a, an, a few alternatives of what the correct spelling might be. It doesn't understand syntax, so it's just giving me words that have similar letters like the, with the D and the O and the G. So I can put in that tap dog. Missing space, let's, let's recognize that. Too many S's. And that to me is a much quicker way of um, correcting spelling. Uh, if I wanted to type in all caps lock, double tapping the shift key makes them turn blue and then whatever I ta ta type uh, 
is in capitals. Same things will work. Double tap the space bar will give me the uh, full stop plus the space, and then tap to turn it off again. Uh, let's go back to the settings. Uh, that's all of them explained. For for me, I have these first two turned off because I'd rather not have a capital letter put in, and certainly the auto correction is more trouble than it's worth. Uh, the other examples down here, the split keyboard. The moment I've turned it off, if I've turned it on, what does the split keyboard do? Go back into notes, bring up the keyboard. If I wanted to type with my thumbs, as you might do in texting, you can split the keyboard over the F and the J is a raised line and I can split that apart and then holding the iPad in one in each hand leaves my thumbs free to type, which uh, to me doesn't work at all because I, I can't type at the best of times and certainly can't type like this. Putting it back again, holding the F and the J and you can drag it back together. The other way of splitting the keyboard is holding down the keyboard key on the bottom right, which sort of makes it visible and hides it. Hold that down, I can split the keyboard from there. And when I use that key, it also undocks the keyboard because that presumably is in a better position for your thumbs when you're actually holding it in each hand, left and right hand, your thumbs are free to do the typing there. Uh, but it's undocked. To put it back, I could also, with the F and the J, split it, uh, put it back together again, merge it, but it's still undocked. And if I forget, and I can't remember why is the keyboard halfway up the screen, it's because it's undocked. I can't move this up to type behind it. I can't see anything behind that because the keyboard is undocked. It's meant to be used for splitting the keyboard. Now you hold that down, you can split it. You can hold that down and you can dock and merge and that will bring it back to where it should be. So if your keyboard is in the middle of the screen, it's become undocked. Uh, if you're not going to split the keyboard, then uh, the best advice would be go back into your settings and turn that off. And then you're not going to have those problems. The uh, other keyboard setting is this one. If you wanted to add an additional keyboard, add a, an international keyboard, if you wanted to, to write in a different language, or wanting to put symbols and uh, emoticons and icons. Uh, you can see there that I have five keyboards there, the English Australia being the main one. And tapping that arrow there gives you a few other uh, things you could, could do. So different layouts. So the QWERTY layout is the main one that I use. I'm not really sure what the others are. And there's different settings there for the, the types of keyboard. I've never really changed those. Uh, the Hebrew keyboard, Hebrew QWERTY. Um, and I only have those there just to, to, to demonstrate. But the emoji one. There's no other settings for that one. But you can add them by going to Add New Keyboard, and there are a whole lot of them down there. So if you, you, you're writing in a language that has not got English characters, then uh, this this will be where you get that keyboard. So if we demonstrate how you change the keyboards, going back into Notes. And to change the keyboard on the globe there, if I hold that globe down, it gives me all the different possible keyboards that I've added. So if I want to type a symbol, the emoji keyboard, uh, there are all the different icons and emoticons, and there's pages and pages of them indicated by the dots, different symbols, and anything you might want to put up there into your typing, different, different uh, languages as well. It's a lot in the symbols one, in the uh, symbols there's a lot there that you might need very useful and in the other language so if I was to go to the Greek one the, the uh, letters are actually becoming the, the the Greek alphabet so if you're typing there I have no idea what I'm typing because I don't know any Greek but that is the way you change your keyboard and then holding the globe down going back to the, the keyboard of your choice and that's all part of the settings and the last setting is keyboard shortcuts so if you wanted to 
stop uh, having to type so much. So, for example, this one here is my shortcut for my email. My email address is the phrase. And if I don't want to type the whole email address, all I have to put in is a shortcut. And that expands that into the word or phrase. And then I can save it. So if I went back into notes to demonstrate that one, and I want to put my email in, and all I have to type is the shortcut, which then offers me the um, full phrase. And if I want that to accept that one, the space bar will replace the shortcut with the phrase. It's very handy for usernames for email addresses. It won't work for passwords. Uh, you still have to type those in. And all you do is add to add one is add a new shortcut down the bottom there. Put in the phrase that is the um, expression or the word that you want to be replaced with the shortcut. So, for example, if it's an email address, you put your email address in as the phrase and, and the shortcut uh, field. What are you going to type? Can this be two letters that will then be replaced by your phrase? If you want to edit them, edit there, you can delete them by holding the uh, red dot. You can then delete, which I won't do, and then done when you're finished. Uh, you, it comes with some already in there. I only use them as you can see. They're only using them for email addresses, but it does come in very handy.